All right, what is up, y'all? It's episode nine of Your House, Our Rules, the sports podcast. If you're watching this fucking on either side of things, YouTube, we're now live streaming, um, trying a couple things out. So just uh, bear with us. Things might be a little bit laggy. I'm trying to test some new things out, getting this new system together. Um, if it, it does happen, just bear with it. We, we might not do it, but we're planning on live streaming the sports events live and then uploading the whole podcast as one onto YouTube so that we can maybe do it more often and keep up with like live sports and stuff like that. Episodes might be a little bit shorter at that point in time, and, but they'd be a little bit more often. So we're going to get right into it. Um, we got a potentially long episode ahead of us today. Um, we're going to kick it off with the NFL free agency, which kind of kicked off this week. A lot of moves have been made. Uh, we're going to kick it off with Stolze. What did you kind of see this week that kind of caught your eye, man? Uh, the main thing, well, we'll start just because he's a, he's a fan favorite. It's Jason Kelsey's going to return. Obviously he get, signed a one year deal. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the GM of, of Philadelphia, just pour him the biggest shot of tequila of all time. And no. it's like obviously some crazy expensive tequila, um, but the main thing for me that I saw was Jason Har was uh, Hargraves or Hargreaves getting signed or not Hargreaves. Um, why can't I think of his name all of a sudden? I thought you just said before we even started it that it was uh, Hargreaves. That's what I thought it was. I can't think of who it was now. But signed to the Forty ers Yeah, the def- defensive lineman. Or the Eagles signed with Forty ers Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I put him and Bosa in the Why can't I think same of line. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they already the rich, got a freakishly good defense. Their big thing right now is a quarterback, which I don't know if you guys actually saw, but they signed uh, Darnold from Carolina. Yeah, um, yeah I saw that. I, 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 just, I was looking at the other day, and I didn't get a response in the group chat, great. but I was looking yeah. at that. I was like, I was like, why? I was like, I don't think this really makes sense. I know that they're kind of questionable on Purdy right now because they're not even sure if he'll be able to throw a ball by the time next season starts. But I felt like they could have got someone a little bit better than that to fill in the spot until Purdy can get back. Or, you know, a lot of people were talking about Lamar Jackson, but I just don't think they can afford Lamar Jackson uh, with where they're at right now, all the players that they're paying. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Did you figure I just out? don't think <clears> – <throat> yeah, it's uh, Javon Hargrave. Yeah. He got a year $84 million contract. And it's just like, dude, he's one of those guys, had a big year last year on that – on on that super good Philadelphia Eagles defensive line, and it's like, fuck off, 49ers. Yeah. I mean, when, Dude, it, when it comes down to it right now. Go get a quarterback or, like, your guys' problem, like, honestly, we were saying it before the season was even over during the, play, during the playoff shows. Their problem is not defense. Their problem is literally keeping anybody alive at quarterback. No, they've had one of the, some of the most stacked defensive year, defenses year yeah. by year. Like, it, it's not their issue. I think that that's one thing that Shanahan kind of harps on a little bit, though. Maybe he wants a really good defense. Uh, you ask me, whatever sport you really play, defense really wins championships. So I would say that it's not a bad idea. But when you don't have anybody at all to be a quarterback, I think you need to make some yeah. moves. And I don't know if Darnold was the, the guy to, to pick there. So. I mean, like, they, they they weren't throwing the ball in the NFC Championship game. No. Like, they were just sending nine every single time. Yeah. They, like, they were no fear. They were just blitzing. Yeah, well, they also didn't have a quarterback to really do anything for, like, the second Right, half, that's what so I'm saying. Like, run. yeah. And that was already their third quarterback of the year. Yeah, and at least you got McCafferty in the backfield to fucking help you out there, so... Um. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a crazy couple of days with, with all that. Um, I did see that uh, what was it, Jalen Ramsey, the guy who got suspended from the Rams or whatever, ended up getting um picked up by who who was it? Miami. 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 Yeah. So I mean, that's something that's somewhere <clears throat> where I could see some benefits. I've seen a lot of comparisons with Ramsey to other cornerbacks and stuff like that. Like Apple had like. 200 less yards uh, receiving and less less uh, touchdown receptions or something than he did. But uh, a lot of people are talking about how good Jalen Ramsey is. And, you know, if he is really that good, that's something that Miami really could use. They were a little bit more offensive-oriented, real, real good fucking passing team this year. So maybe stacking up that defense will help them a little bit. But uh, with Tua behind the line, um, you never know because you tap him the wrong way. He might just be out for four games. So <laughs> If he can even yeah. play. Right. Right. Well, I mean, honestly, like – like, I mean, Spilly, I know you saw my tweet where I said LMAO why to uh, Mike White getting a two-year $16 million contract. And it's yeah. honestly like, you know what, at this point, like more NFL teams should probably be doing this. And that's why me and Wallet on the last podcast were saying that if Stetson Bennett's sitting there, 
in the sixth round. Like you look at Mike White getting sixteen million dollars to sit on the bench. Why not go ahead and get a guy on a rookie contract for four years? Right. Right. Exactly. Who's a proven winner? I know he's a little bit older. Well, that's always your, done. But I'd rather have a proven winner. Yeah. My thing with Stenson, I mean, I I reflected on a little bit, and you guys might have a point, but he's just not much of a NFL quarterback to me. And you know, he's been playing on Georgia, which the past two years has easily been the best two year or the best team in uh, college football. Like you could argue that Alabama or, or OSU was there, but when it came down to it, the Alabama didn't really show up as much as they needed to this year. And Ohio State played them close, but I still think that Georgia was probably the better team. If Harrison Jr. didn't go out, it might have been a different game. But, you know, he is, he has proven to win. It's just how much of it was him and how much of it was the team around him. Well, yeah, of course. But at the sure. same time, I look at the, you know, the him or Brandon Allen. Who would you rather have? I don't know. I'd rather have Stenson Bennett. And if you can get him at a, at a, at a uh, sixth or seventh job, round. We'll pay the guy less. Yeah, if you yeah, can get exactly. him in the seventh round, it's like, why yeah. not? Yeah, why not? Exactly. I don't know who else you're really going to pick up that late as a quarterback or whatever. I mean, um, they got that Washington quarterback. What was his name? Browning, or whatever. They didn't. I don't think they drafted him, but they. Um, I think they like not traded. Maybe uh, got him in like free agency. Jake Browning, or whatever his name yeah. was. But that's you know kind of like a similar situation there. I don't think they burned a, a draft pick on him necessarily, but I st- I still think if you get a sixth or seventh round quarterback like a. Uh, Stetson Bennett, I think that's a, a good pickup as long as they can draft uh, wisely in the first, you know, five or six rounds. Or honestly, dude, like it's one of those things where you just need to look around at big time programs. Like if you look at the quarterbacks that are around right now, like I'll, Joe Burrow even sticks into this kind of subject where it's like <clears throat> the quarterbacks that go to these big schools that, you know, dominate throughout college don't always pan out. Because they don't, it's almost like it's because they're not facing any adversity. They they went to, you know, they won three state championships in high school. Mm-hmm. They went to Alabama, LSU, Georgia, and they did whatever. So you look at dudes like Ben Roethlisberger, Miami, Ohio, Drew right. Brees, Purdue. You look at like Joe Burrow went through a lot of shit. He had three years, three years of a bunch of bullshit at Ohio State. Went to LSU, had a rough ass year, got blown up in his bowl game. It's all over the fucking ESPN and whatnot. And, you know, it's like you almost want a guy that has gone through the ringer yeah. a little bit like Eli Manning at, at Ole Miss got yeah. the shit kicked out of him but learned how to play against that future right. NFL defenses yeah had adversity yeah through right. It. yeah right. You, need, you need a little grit to you so I mean, yeah I, I, see, I see your point with that for sure it's, a, it's definitely a solid point um but let's bring it back around to the free agency a, a little bit um we can talk about the Bengals a little bit Um, If you guys want to, I think I kind of want to pick on Aaron Rodgers right now because I know we talked about that the last episode. Um, With that being said, it's looking like he is going to the Jets. Um, He came and gave them a wish list, and the Jets have just immediately gone after it. Um, That's what everyone's talking about it. They seem to want him the most, so it's looking like he's going there. Yeah, all the other quarterbacks are gone. Right. Right. Like, unless you're going to trade two first round picks for Lamar Jackson, which or I don't, I don't think there's a quarterback in the league that's two first round picks right now like you no. can say Mahomes you like whatever but like at the end of the day you're talking two first round picks plus their contract like I think it depends on how bad your team like really needs a quarterback like the 49ers would be a perfect spot for Lamar Jackson if they had the money because the, their thing right now is they need a quarterback they're loaded everywhere else they just don't they're, they literally ran out of four fucking quarterbacks this year but, I mean, that they're the product of smart capping manipulation and smart signings and not overpaying right. for players and right. being exactly. able to form a system. Right. Like, right. And that's something I mean? that's something that I hope the Bengals can do right now because, you know, they just lost or uh, basically our entire secondary. Dax Hill is going to have to come in and play, but we lost Jesse Bates, which is whatever. I think most rational fans uh, around Cincinnati or just the, of the Bengals in general – Kind of knew he was gone. I know a lot of us didn't want him last year, me being one of them. But I did want to get Von Bell back. I guess they decided that paying him that as much as he wanted was too much. Um, and he ended up going. So now we need to fill in those gaps. And our big thing has always been the O-line. But now that we're starting to lose on the defense a little bit, it's just like, what, what do we do from here? So there's still a lot of time, a lot of players on the board that can definitely make something work. But um, that was definitely a spot where we didn't necessarily want to want to lose out. Because a lot of people have been talking about our CBs and DBs um, going forward, so yeah, the in the Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers thing, like if you want to circle back to that, I mean the wish list or whatever, 
and them going after it, I mean, like, how are they going to have money left to be able to pay? You know what I mean? They're going to sign all these guys. Are they going to have money left to be able to pay Rodgers? Well, it sounds like to me that Aaron Rodgers is kind of setting something up where he's getting other people. I don't know this for sure. I don't know what's going through his head, but maybe he's trying to load up a couple more players around him with the wish list, and he's going to take less money in order to you know yeah. put a championship team together. Because as we've seen, he's got one Super Bowl, um, and I think he lost in another Super Bowl, but he's the king of losing in the NFC Championship game. Like right. He, he gets there, he just can't get it done. So maybe he's trying to put a stacked ass team. The Jets defense is already fucking uh, ship caliber. It's just they need yeah. the weapons on offense to compete. So yeah. Yeah. I guess he couldn't have done that, what he's trying to do in New York at Green Bay. Probably not. Obviously. Not with the contract that he signed last year because that was the biggest issue. He just had such a big contract that they weren't able to really put the core around him to get shit done. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see that. Uh, what is that? The, is that the AFC East if he goes to the yeah. – Yeah. I was about to say, we can AFC is going to be stacked. Because uh, Josh Allen restructured his contract. Yep. Uh, they save – they lower to like thirty nine point eight hit this year, um, so like they'll they'll have a little bit of room to go ahead and do a bunch of stuff like that puts them into like the top eight I think in terms of yeah. cap space available. Yeah. So AFC is going to be loaded. Well, the AFC is going to be loaded, oh, dude, but the AFC East, look at the East was already looking yeah. at four teams to the last week last week potentially being in, and now they're that now they're just upgrading even more, putting Rodgers in there because the Jets dropped yep. out first. The Patriots and Miami were still fighting for a spot at, at the last week. So with all four of those teams, that's just going to be a shit show. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a loaded AFC. For sure. And if you're looking at like the NFC and the things that they're doing, or the, the AFC North, our division, and what we're doing, the Bengals, obviously, two AFC championships in a row. The Steelers found a way to put shit together at the end of the year last year. They're probably going to be a decent team. Depending on how Lamar situation goes, it, I think that the, the they may even be the two or three seed at the end of the year. But with Watson getting into the system with the Browns or whatever, that's going to be a stacked division too. I mean, the, the AFC West... It's it's looking like they're going to be as equally of under of a cheeseburger as they were this year. But judging by some of the things that they're doing, like they're, uh, the Raiders are going for Garoppolo, got rid of Carr, and it's like you're just moving laterally. You're not really doing much there. Uh, the Chargers will still probably be good, but the Broncos are making a couple moves, getting like P Ryan and stuff like that. But I it d- depends a lot on that. And then you have the West, which is or the um, AFC South, which is just garbage, and they're probably going to remain garbage. So. Um, Unless that's where Lamar goes, is Indianapolis. You think he's going to go to Indianapolis? Mm. That's the most one. That's the most thrown around rumor I've seen. I just think that Indianapolis kind of wants to have like a, you think a restructure a fran- franchise quarterback. I mean, I know their co- their coach just left and went to um, went to Carolina and then traded up. So Carolina might end up picking up who I thought they might take, C.J. Stroud. They're probably just going to eliminate the chances of the Colts getting a good draft pick for a quarterback. Yeah. So it might be the move. Um, but I just I just don't know about that. So. And what the that? Bears got for that trade was crazy. Oh, dude, they fleeced them. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Fleeced them. Yeah. Big time. So, I, mean, <clears throat> I mean, when you especially like when you look at the value of the pick this year, like it's not like you're trading up to get the Joe Burrow. Right. No. It's not quarterback heavy. This right. year, no. Yeah, and we've said that a couple times on the podcast. That this is not the year for a quarterback. I think that nope. CJ is probably the only one that might be an elite quarterback or like a top tier quarterback. I think every other quarterback in the league is probably on the bench or out of the league in the next four years. So, yeah, I mean that's kind of like to loop back to what I was just saying. Like, go ahead and look at those. I mean, those, that Bryce Petty kid, Mister Irrelevant, played at a big time Big Twelve school, mm-hmm. threw for the most yards and. You know what I mean? Like, those guys are out there. Like, Samaj P. Ryan wasn't a huge prospect, but he has the most touchdowns in a single game uh, in NCAA history. So it's like those kind of guys are out there, and they're just not big names because they're not a huge program. And that's honestly where the Bengals do really well. When you look at it, you get Jermaine Pratt, and like the, like we were saying earlier, like the third, or what, third fourth round out of NC right. State. Logan Wilson out of Wyoming. Like, that's yeah. scouting. Yeah, that's yeah all. that Logan Wilson well, pick was... He was like that's they mo- uh, besides, mo- yeah, because of his injuries. I mean, he would have been mm-hmm. slated a first round pick. Well, they kept saying oh, that. Yeah, I think that yeah, all easily. comes down to what Stolze just said is scouting. When it comes down to it, those guys are out there, but you need to have the knowledge of being able to find them. And like 
Guys like us obviously won't be able to do it. If you're a franchise that has scouts that are able to go to all these games and really have good, sound information, then yeah, you can find some diamonds in the rough like that. But um, that's really hard to do. Um, and I actually do think that the Bengals are, are pretty good at doing that, uh, especially now that Katie's kind of running shit a little bit more. But I, I think when it came down to it, we're, we were good at doing that defensively and not necessarily offensively, and we struggled with ownership back when Mike Brown was ahead of it. So, yeah. Well, yeah, back then, but now it's, you know, you're looking at Duke Tobin, who he was open during the combine. Me and Wallet were talking about this when you walked in the other room for a minute um, when he was talking about they're not going to try and grow the team from outside on, you know, UFAs and big names and everything like that because the Bengals don't give out guaranteed guaranteed money. And the, the big dudes, the, the best of the best, they demand guaranteed money. But it's one of those things where they're going to look for value and they're going to look for scheme fit. And a guy like Jamal Williams has a lot of similar numbers to a guy like Joe Mixon, but you're going to be paying him, you know, six, seven million dollars less on the year. It's just right. it's finding things like that where you're getting value and you're getting team guys. Right. You don't need these me guys that are only worried about the guaranteed money. Yeah. And right. I, would, I think a lot of it. Sorry, Spilly. I was going to say I think a lot of it too is patience. They, the Bengals are really good at staying patient with this. They never process. sign the first couple of days. They, they usually yes, wait they, four or five days. Exactly. They're they're very patient and kind of see what's going on, and then kind of like you know people are playing checkers while they're playing yeah. chess a little bit. Right. Yeah. And oh. notice the second that a linebacker got signed, I forget exactly which one it was. The second a linebacker got signed and set the market, they went and got Jermaine. Yeah. Yep. Like the very second that, and that's what they do really well is they wait for the market to set itself. They don't set the market. That's well, what the right. Browns made a huge mistake of doing. Well, that exactly. was one thing that I, Pratt, like, I, I kind of saw him as one of the guys because I was always like, he's going to get paid. So if he's gone, he's gone. It is what it is. But he also, like, vocally after the AFC Championship game, even though he did have the OZA fucking, <clears throat> like, like, <clears throat> excuse me. The meltdown that he had a little bit, it wasn't in, but more than a couple hours after that, he apologized and was very vocal about the fact that, he, that like they were one play away and he wanted to stay at a winning team. So it's guys like that that also you want to help form the morale on the team. When you have people like Bates and fucking Bell that are going to go out and chase a bag, those aren't necessarily people that we want on the team. I mean, if they're good players, sure, we'll take them, but we're trying to build a good core, and that's something that I think has made the Bengals so successful the past two years is just morale, just team building. I mean, shit, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at B.J. Hill tweeted and said that if they signed shave Jermaine Pratt, he was going to shave his head. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. Like, those guys, I mean, I know Von Bell was a, a good locker room guy and everything, but, like, Jermaine Pratt is a, a – you're right. It's You're right, Spilly. He's a good core – uh, you know, of the character of what they're trying to build. Yeah. And they're not going to go chase. And they got him at a great value. Yeah. Great value. Yeah. And it's also, too, like, you're th like when you're talking, like, the safety position, like, those box-free safeties and strong safeties come out of college every single year. Yep. Every single year. It's not like a, you know, like, it's not like one of those you get one decent defensive, defensive back or something like that out of a line, out mm -hmm. of a draft or something. Like, safety is a pretty deep, it's pretty deep. And to me, it's telling me that, you know, Lou Anarumo believes in Dax Hill, Cam Taylor Britt. Yeah. He, he, he I believe thinks in that Lou Anarumo. Yeah. Oh, and, that's, exactly. and that's exactly what I'm getting around to is just believe in the logician. And I think this, I think he's got it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why I said be patient and, and know that they've got, they've, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It I, might be too level headed for some Bengals fans that they're, that they already haven't blown through the cap yeah. on like huge guys. But you also have to keep in mind that next year we've, literally have to pay our entire defense right so if you go out and you drop 80 million dollars on a defensive lineman this year say goodbye to logan wilson say goodbye to mike hilton you know what i mean just start just start kissing guys goodbye right they know what they're doing they're patient with the yeah. process and they're smart with their with their money yeah and that's something that i'm not really worried about as much with the Bengals uh is the defensive side of things historically the Bengals have always had like the entire afc north it's hard-nosed defense and I'm pretty pretty okay with the moves that we're going to make on that. So we'll see how things go with that. I think that it, as weird as it is to say, I think some teams might need want to take notes of that because, you know, some teams are just really out there throwing a bunch of money at high hitters and stuff like that, and it's not going to do much for their team. So I mean, yeah, um, <laughs> it's just like uh, the Chiefs went out and threw a bunch of money at that at that right tackle when they lost their left tackle. But they went out, and spent eighty million dollars on a right I, tackle, and they're going right. to make him play I left. I saw that. Who did they? Who did they end up pick up? I can't remember his name, but I, I know I read that. I did too. But 
So they're going to slide that guy at left? That's Darren, what they're saying. Darren Waller, is that? No, no he's Darren a, Waller's the tight end. And, dude, here's the other thing. Like, with Darren Waller, like, what are the Raiders doing, man? Like, they're you're going to go out and you're going yeah. to sign, sign a quarterback for what did he get, like, 30 mil guaranteed or something like that? I can look it up. I can't remember off the top of my head. Who's he going to pass yeah. to? <laughs> but who's he going to pass to? Right. And not to mention, dude, you gave up Darren Waller. Like, yeah, he's been hurt, but, like, he's coming off back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons after, like, he missed 11 games this year, but 1,000 years, thousand yards before that, you give him up for a third-round pick. Yeah, three, right, that was nothing. Three years, $67.5 million, including mm-hmm. $34 million guaranteed. Yeah, $34 million. Yeah. Like, who's he going to throw the ball to? Right. Uh, just no. Devontae? Have fun. Yeah, He's right. bracketed. I mean, Devontae's a beast. I'm, I'm not even yeah. – I didn't even play high school football, and he's bracketed. Yeah. Right. It, it, I mean, it is what it is, man. The Raiders are just like I was saying before with the AFC West. It doesn't seem like these teams are willing to make the moves to, to put themselves into contention with the Chiefs. And the Chiefs will probably win six out of six in, in that again. You might see a little bit with um, what's going on. Uh, with the the Chargers or whatever, but you know something has to be wrong with the Chargers for Eckler to request a trade, and that's someone that I wouldn't mind to see the Bengals pick up. But like, it that that's a valuable asset that you have for that team that made them as make the playoffs last year, and they're they're losing that, so it kind of makes you wonder what the fuck's going on. But also, it's goddamn Chargers. They they're historically a bad franchise. So yeah, I'd rather have Jamal Williams than Eckler. I think. I, I'd want, rather have him because, like, Jamal Williams is one of my favorite players in the NFL. He's a big fucking anime nerd and fucking that's my man. Yeah. All right, but you boys got anything else to say about uh, any of this free agency and stuff like that before we start moving on to March Madness a little bit? I mean, the only thing I have to say is just, you know, be patient, relax, you know, with the yeah. Bengals and shit. You know, people are going to uh, see them doing, you know, doing things that they, oh, I w- you know, wish they would have kept him, wish they would have kept him, or we should sign this guy, we should sign that guy. I mean, I, I watch all these YouTube videos and these people are like, oh, here's a guy that they should go after. Here's a get Like, they know what they're doing. That's why they're in a the position that they're in. Well, in the yeah. last couple of years, they've done a really good job of that. So just trust the process. Exactly. And not to mention, you also got to look at, the positions that the Bengals are really in need of, those, the markets in the free agency, like those markets are not moving. Nope. Like safety's not moving, cornerback's not moving, defensive line really hasn't moved. We don't have to worry about linebacker. I mean, honestly, if I'm the Bengals, like now that the linebacker market is set, do you go ahead and jump on Logan Wilson and just get it out of the way yeah. before he has a before he has a 110 tackle season? And <laughs> yeah. you He's, know what I mean? Like he sets the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he ends up being, you know, he he has a better season than Roquan Smith, who's getting paid one hundred ten million dollars over four. Jesus. Yeah, <clears throat> that's crazy. Well, I know. I think like the, we got Jermaine for a steal. Deal. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I think we should go. Thank fucking, you, Jermaine. Uh, Playoff P, my boy. I think we yeah, should immediately I appreciate get, that. I think we should alleviate, immediately get Wilson and get that tough fucking linebacker core that we have. Our big things right now is now that P Ryan's gone, we need to find another running back. I don't know if they have uh, thoughts of putting in like Evans or something like that, someone who's been on the bench or whatever. But I think they need to go out and get a good guy who, if they get, well, they might not get rid of Mixon, but if he restructures, that's definitely a doable thing. The secondary is where we really need it in the offensive line. So yeah. the, right now with free agency and stuff like that, I think the offensive line is the key spot right now. We don't want to draft offensive linemen. We've said this over and over. We need to go out and get some big names to protect Burrow, in my opinion. Right, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been saying all along is <clears throat> don't go out and draft – or, yeah, don't draft offensive linemen for the love of God. Everybody that we want to replace is people that we drafted. Go out. It doesn't have to be a crazy guy like Lael Collins was. Like, it can go – just make it a dude that – Win seventy percent of his snaps. Yep, make it Joe a last three and a half seconds, dude. That's all. That's all we need. Right. I mean, honestly, if we could clone uh, Ted Ted Karras four times, I'd be like, just give me it. <laughs> like, let's go. They're pretty dope. 